Caught one. Hey, Peter from Fringe Sport here again. I'm here to talk about bumper plates especially because they're on sale today. So you get our best bumper plates in the world, which are backed by the most reviews in the world. Check our website, most reviews on the bumper plates. And they're also the most durable, best warranty bumper plates in the world. Yes, it's really easy to say it, but check all the reviews on our Facebook page. And also I'm gonna be showing you a couple of things right now that will help you see how great our bumper plates are. I'm also here to talk about a variety of other things. Um, oddly enough, when I mentioned on a previous video that my mom hated my hair, that got a ton of comments. So if you have questions about my hair or my mom, feel free. <laughs> you're not often gonna get that offer. Um, by the way, mom, if you're watching, I did get my hair cut today. I apologize. So let's start talking about bumper plates. So I've been seeing a number of posts. Saw a YouTube video, for example, that says save the tens. And it talks about, follow me, Susie. Actually, I'm not seeing it. You may follow me. Follow me a little bit further here. I know, very stimulating. You're gonna see me fall on my butt on video. <laughs> Hooray! So, here we are at our barbell sale rack at Fringe Sport. So, this Say the Tens YouTube video, which is a few years old, talks about how you should never, ever, ever drop a barbell with only 10 pound bumper plates on it. And so, what it says is grab yourself a 15 pound training bar. This is our Fringe Sport 15 pound training bar. And load 25 pound plates on here if you need to reach 65 pounds for a lift. So let's say you're a female doing a CrossFit wad, needs 65 pounds. Instead of getting a 45 pound bar, 20 kg bar, and loading 10 pound bumper plates on there, go ahead and grab yourself a 15 pound bar and load 25 pound bumpers on there. It's a great video, it's pretty funny, guy caresses the plate, guy's gentle to the plate, guy's in love with the plate. Kind of pisses me off every time I see it because you can't drop a bar with crappy 10 pound bumper plates, but you can drop a bar with awesome 10 pound bumper plates, like the One Fit Wonder bumper plates. So this is kind of a bygone era where bumper plates suck, even bumper plates from some of the big guys, yes. You know who I'm talking about. Anyways, now, One Fit Wonder training bars are perfect, excuse me, yeah, it's a Wonder Bar. One Fit Wonder training bars are perfectly good training bar. But we're talking about bumper plates today, so I'm gonna put this up because you don't need to use just 25 pound plates on a training bar. So, Susie, now you get to walk backwards. Oh, okay, Susie outfoxed me here. So again, to talk about the One Fit Wonder plates. We're gonna roll over here in our gym. And, wow, that's an old one there. Here is a new-ish. This is our in-house fringe sport gym, which by the way, if you're ever in Austin, please feel free to come by and check us out. And if you live in Austin, as of right now, our gym is completely open to the public from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Mondays through Fridays. Come on by, sign a release, work out, 100% free. Make sure to say hi to me. I'd love to say hi to everybody. So, to bumper plates. This is a 10 pound bumper plate. It is a one fit wonder 10 pound bumper plate. As you can see, these are designed by us here in-house and they're made on the marvelous coast of China. <laughs> now, <clears throat> bumper, 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 bumpers. So really where the story starts in terms of bumper plates and durability, sorry, I'm in Austin, Texas, it's hot. So I'm sweating. I also uh, did a little rowing before this video, did a few presses. Maybe it's not the greatest idea, but hey, I got my pump on. So. <clears throat> Where this story starts is when we started selling bumper plates from Fringe Sport, um, you definitely could not drop 10 pound bumper plates. This was back in 2010. Bumper plates basically sucked, at least for the 10 pound plates. Uh, what happened there was every bumper plate factory in the world at that time 
was actually a tire factory. So bumper plates, especially the crumb rubber bumper plates, may be familiar with the high temp style. Looks like we don't have any of those style in our gym here. You know why we don't have any of those style? Because they're not the best bumper plates. What are the best bumper plates? I don't know. But anyways, so at that time, there were a bunch of factories that were tire factories and gasket factories and that sort of thing. And they started making these things called bumper plates, about 450 millimeters in diameter and made out of rubber with some sort of steel or possibly brass, depending on the factory, bushing in the center to throw on a barbell. They were not very durable because you know what? The engineers that were making the molds and making the designs for these things are tire engineers. They don't care about bumper plates, they care about tires and gaskets and that sort of thing. So, we started selling bumpers and I've got a history of traveling the world, doing various things here and there, and started. I started visiting bumper plate factories. This is before I even founded Fringe Sport. Started visiting factories and trying to find where we can make the best factories. Finally, we, I, I was on a trip, it's in China, in Qingdao, China. Have you ever seen that beer when you go to a Chinese restaurant that says to sing Tao on it? T-S-I-N-G-T-A-O. Yeah, Sing Tao beer. That's actually pronounced Qingdao, but I didn't know that before I went to Qingdao, China. So in Qingdao, China, why, they, why does Qingdao beer like everywhere? You go to a Chinese restaurant in the US, like a crappy Chinese restaurant, you can buy Qingdao beer. The reason is, <coughs> back 150 years ago, a bunch of German settlers went to the coast of China. They were like engineers and stuff like that. They went to the coast of China. They were helping to build China, helping to develop China before Mao rolled in, before China was communist, all this stuff. And when they got to China, they were like, okay, we're thirsty, we wanna drink something. And the Chinese people gave them this stuff called Baijiu, which is rice wine. It's rice wine, it's terrible. Like, is anybody, do we have any comments yet, by the way, Susie? Why aren't you guys commenting? Give me a comment. I'm gonna tell you like crazy Chinese stories and beer stories and talk about my hair and my mom and stuff like that. And occasionally talk about bumper plates until we start getting comments that are like more or less on topic so that I can start addressing those. Anyways, so these Germans, they get to China. They're, you know, helping to engineer dams and build roads and build railroads and stuff like that. And they're like, we're thirsty, we want something to drink. And they're used to drinking these mugs full of beer in Germany. But when they get to China, there are no mugs full of beer. Instead, they're giving these like little glasses of this stuff called Baijiu. So Baijiu is a rice wine. But the thing about the Chinese is that they call basically everything wine. You know, you pour a glass of whiskey, you pour a glass of scotch, something like that. And then they'll say, oh, look, that's wine. So it took me a while to get this because I thought whenever they said wine, they meant you know, what we in the West think of as wine, which is a, you know, more alcoholic than beer, but let's say far less alcoholic than scotch. But no, it's all wine over there, being the hard stuff. So the Germans get there, they're thirsty, they're given this Baijiu. This Baijiu tastes like, tastes like something that you would soak engine parts in to, to you know, degrease them and to clean them off. And so the Germans are like, screw this, this is terrible. So some of those German engineers, instead of you know, engineering roads and bridges and stuff like that, they build these distilleries, these breweries, sorry, not distilleries, breweries, and they start brewing beer because they want beer like back home in Germany. And that's how Qingdao, Tsingtao, beer got started way back in the day. So whenever you go up to, if you wanna to go to the best Oktoberfest in China, it's in Qingdao in Northern China. Now, best Oktoberfest in China is kind of faint praise. So if you're really looking for the best Oktoberfest in the world, you know, don't go to China. Um, you know, I can recommend a few other places. But anyways, so, long story short, <laughs> I'm going to Qingdao, China. And I'm going there for a variety of reasons, but to visit all these bumper plate factories. And finally, I find this one little factory, and I find this engineer working in this factory. And I'm looking around, like, where are the tires? And there are no tires. But you know what there are? It's a small factory. But there are these stacks of bumper plates. And I'm like, holy crap. So I asked the engineer and the owner of the factory, I'm like, what do you guys make here? And he says, bumper plates. And I said, oh, well, but tires and gaskets too, right? He said, no, we don't make tires and gaskets, we make bumper plates. And I'm like, why don't you make tires and gaskets? Everybody else makes tires and gaskets. And he says, because I wanna make the best bumper plates in the world. And I said, holy moly, the clouds are opening up. 
I want to make the best bumper plates in the world. And so, boom, we go from there. And that was uh, four or five years ago. We went out and drank a bunch of chinged out beer too. Like that night and like some other nights too. Some nights that I don't remember. But uh, there was a good night, probably the best nights I don't remember. But anyways, so that's the story of me finding the factory. So what, what's happened since then is, you know, this is we're French Sport, Austin, Texas. Like we don't have a factory back there making bumper plates, right? And you know, I'd love to make bumper plates in the US, except it's dirty, it's terrible, you know? Um, but since then, we've been partnered with the factory, partnered with the engineers there. Hi. That's okay, we're just shooting. Just walk through our shoot. Okay. <laughs> so, a couple of good friends came by to visit Fringe. Say hi. Oh, you're famous. <laughs> so, stop by anytime. Thanks for having us as always. Pleasure. Be well, be safe, be cool out there. A baby walks through the shoot and no one makes a comment? <laughs> Uh, Jojo says that uh, I've had my plates for over two years and they're still good as new. Jojo? Yes. Jojo, you are my favorite person in the world right now. <laughs> Susie's about my second favorite because she's holding the camera and, you know, not laughing and like, you know, jangling the camera too much as I desperately beg for comments. But Jojo, I, I, I really love that comment. And that's really what we're doing this for. We're, so before we came onto the scene making these amazingly durable bumper plates. People would, you know, buy these 10 pound bumpers and they would taco and they would crap out super fast. And, you know, people would make these YouTube videos like I was talking before saying, save the 10 pound bumpers, don't drop 10 pound bumpers. And I'm like, that's what a bumper plate is for. Don't drop a bumper plate. That's like, I don't know. Don't shoot a gun. Oh, bad example, bad example. But, you know, it's not using, don't swing a kettlebell. Don't use something for what it was created on this earth for. You know, if you don't drop a bumper plate, I think the bumper plate is sad. It wants to be dropped. Just like a bar wants to be lifted, a rower wants to be rowed, a car wants to be driven, shoes want to be run in. Drop a bumper plate! <laughs> so anyway, so back to the factory. So, <clears throat> we partnered with them. And what we do is we provide all of this feedback and design ideas and, you know, design direction in many cases for do, let's do this. So even this factory, when, you know, I went to them, they said, oh, well, don't drop 10 pound bumper plates. And what I said was, people are going to drop 10 pound bumper plates. And it's a losing proposition to say, don't drop 10 pound bumper plates. Instead, let's be smarter. Let's engineer 10 pound bumper plates that can be dropped. And that's what we've done. And I'm really, really proud of it. So, you know, what, what is the secret sauce? I'm not gonna tell you. No, I'm just kidding. We're an open book. I'm gonna tell you about it. So, <clears throat> you've got a couple of big issues with making a durable bumper plate. And I'm particularly focusing on the 10 pound bumpers here. So, issue number one is the stiffness of that bumper plate because it's got to be sufficiently stiff to actually, you know, stand straight up because that was one problem with some early bumpers is that they weren't stiff enough. They were wobbly and they would talk over and fold over. So stiffness is like problem number one. Problem number two is going to be where the center ring mates to the rubber of the rest of the bumper because whenever you have two different, two heterogeneous materials coming together, that's where you just inherently have problems because you're fusing things together that are not similar. So rubber, very dissimilar from metal. So it's very difficult where you've got that mating point where you put those two things together. Again, I'm sweating. It's Austin. Ooh, it's hot. It's hot. Give me some comments. Talk about my hair. Talk about my mom. Come on, something. Um, Hunter just said he opened his box of all fringe gear and hasn't looked back yet. Um, he says he's never restricted any weights from being dropped. Yeah, Hunter, Jojo is still my favorite person, but you're my second favorite person at this moment. Open your box with all fringe gear. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Send us some pictures. I'd love to see that. Let me see that box. Ooh, that could be bad. That's not that kind of video. <laughs> Anyways, so we've got the stiffness issue. And then we've got the heterogeneous material mating it together issue. So stiffness, first of all. So we go with a relatively high durometer 
for the 10 and 15 pound plates, a little bit higher than on the rest of the plates because you need a little bit more stiffness on the 10s and 15s because of their very thinness. But while we have a relatively high durometer for most of the plate, we actually have a different lower durometer rubber here around the center insert and that acts like a shock absorber because if you don't do that then you get all of the shock of the drop transmitted right through to the center of the plate and you can create cracking issues around that center hub insert. So we've got high durometer here, lower durometer, so high durometer for stiffness here and kind of going all around, low durometer for shock, or lower in any case, durometer for shock absorption immediately here around the center insert. Additionally, we've got this flange center insert so you can stick the bar right in. You know, it's not a, uh, a hard lip that you can kind of jam the bar up against, but you can, uh, it's got this little flange here, guides the bar in. And then on the inside, we've got a knurled or sandblasted can't really see it here, but on the inside you got a knurled or sandblasted internal part there with a couple of prongs of rebar sticking out here. So what the knurling or sandblasting and the rebar does is it creates more surface area for that rubber to bond to. And then we additionally have a couple of other solvents put on in there to help again the bonding of the rubber. So that's a couple of things. The durometer here, and we've got a, a special type of rubber that we're using to withstand those drops. And then we've got those center inserts with a little bit of magic around those inserts. One other thing that we do with the 10 and the 15 pound plate, sorry, the 10 pound plates only, is where most plates are 450 millimeters in diameter. So that's edge to edge, 450 millimeters, to set you up at a really great height for your first pull in whatever lift you're doing off the floor. On the 10 pound plates, we do these at 445 millimeters in diameter. So what that means, that extra five millimeters, means that you're going to be only lower by 2.5 millimeters because it's five millimeters across the whole uh, plate. So you're only gonna be lower 2.5 millimeters if you just have 10 pounders on the bar. But if you have any, so you're not gonna notice that in operation. But if you have any other plates on the bar that are larger than 10 pound plates, this is gonna raise those 10 pound plates slightly off the ground. So when you drop the bar, the thicker plates are gonna absorb more of that force. Cool? All right, let's load up a bar and I'm gonna start dropping it a little bit. Yeah, uh, Billy says he's purchased plates a few weeks ago and he couldn't be happier. And your daughter say dance, monkey dance. <laughs> Sorry, is my wife commenting on this? <laughs> oh man, I've been saying something about my mom. I haven't been saying anything about my wife. Uh, dance, monkey, dance. Well, since it's requested, um, my daughters often like it when they lock me out of the house and then uh, I'm trying to think what I, what I do. I usually do a little bit like this. All right, I told you, you give me a comment, I'm gonna do it, so let's go. Now, I, I assume that that means sufficient dancing for the moment. So I grabbed a wand bar here, I'm gonna load it up some 10 pound plates and start dropping it, unless the comments tell me otherwise. Dave Tillman just walked in from CrossFit Cedar Park. Don't be sorry, brother. Go show Dave Tillman, say hi to the peeps. Hi, what's up? When are you heading out to LA? I leave Saturday, Brooklyn leaves tomorrow. Oh, awesome. Is Brooklyn gonna win? Hell yeah, she's gonna win, dude. She's <laughs> You've been practicing wads. Hell yeah, she's gonna win. <laughs> she's ready. Um, Go ahead. Yeah, no worries, no worries. So that was Dave Tillman, CrossFit Cedar Park. We're excited to see everybody, obviously, at the CrossFit Games, but uh, we're really happy to see Brooklyn competing in the team division. So she trains here in Austin and, you know, real good friend of Fringe. So we're super excited about that. So we've got a 
couple of 10 pound plates here. Gonna throw some Oso collars to get a good, nice, tight seal on those plates. Super excited that we're getting some comments now. So, before I start dropping these plates, you know, I wanna kinda call back to the beginning of this pretty long video that we've, you know, just started spouting off on. And, you know, my pet peeve, like I mentioned, is when I see people, you know, don't drop 10 pound plates, don't drop 10 pound plates. You can absolutely drop quality 10 pound plates. And that's what we've got here. So, I don't know if you guys have seen, we've got a video where we threw them off the roof. I was thinking about doing that today, but I think for a live video, it's kind of boring because there's gonna be a lot of like me dragging a bar up to the roof and then there's gonna be a very brief moment of me throwing it off the roof um, and then potentially me dragging it up to the roof again and then throwing it off. So you're gonna get like two or three minutes of both probably dead air essentially for each, you know, five seconds of me throwing it off the roof. But maybe we'll do it one of these days. So got a 20 kg bar there on the ground and I'm gonna be doing a really, really crappy snatch, although it's only 65 pounds, so no worries. <laughs> I'm just gonna drop it down a little bit and then we'll talk a, a little bit about what's happening, the force on the bar, and why you don't need to worry about this in your box. So. So that was a real quick drop that I had there. So one of the things to notice is this high durometer rubber is gonna give a very dead bounce. But at the same time, see you can look at this bar here and you can see that there's not any tilting or any wavering or any problem with those plates at all now keep in mind i'm these plates that we're using on this bar i didn't just pull these out of a box they're not brand new plates uh and besides that i mean i think you can tell from the sweat on my face it's very hot it's almost 100 degrees out there and we don't have any ac here in the gym so additionally it's a very hot environment for plates which by the way rubber is going to react differently in a cold environment versus a hot environment and one of the things in a lot of our testing that we'd seen is that the hotter it was the the less durable a lot of our early plate formulations were because they were they're were plenty durable in you know 75 degrees or 80 degrees or something like that but when you start getting 100 105 degrees then that's something else entirely so now what we've got here is we've got very durable plates whether it's very cold or very warm. Now, the other thing to mention, you know, I just want to call back again. These are plates that have been used and abused here at Fringe Sport in our in house gym. These are not brand new plates, and I'm taking out dropping one. Comments? Uh, Kev, or Ken says that he loves his Fringe Sport bar and plates. Ken, He's you're amazing. You're like my fourth or fifth favorite person. Is that what's going on here? Yeah, I just get getting pushed to the bottom. And it looks okay. Like, I'm just kidding. <laughs> So keep those comments coming. Nobody said anything about my mom yet. Nobody said anything about my hair. I got a haircut today just for this, just for you guys. I'm being very sad now. Like I feel like my hair like doesn't look good. I, I feel like, you know, I don't know. I feel inadequate. So we'll see. So now I'm gonna drop this bar a few more times and you can kind of see the dead bounce and you can see the fact that the plates aren't toppling. So here we go. So one of the things you can see there is I'm being super sloppy, um, A, both with my form because it's lightweight, um, maybe that's no excuse, I don't know. But I'm being super sloppy with both my form and the way that I throw it down. So one of the other things that we found early on is that a lot of bumper plates will say tested to 5,000 drops, tested to 10,000 drops. So the machines that do this testing, they pull the bumper, pull the bar up just you know, perfectly evenly, and then boom, boom, drop the bar perfectly evenly. That doesn't happen in a box. People drop the bar all sorts of crazy ways. Sure, maybe it should be perfectly even or more or less even, but the reality is many times you're gonna have one side of the bar come down before the other side. And so what that does is introduces lateral stress on the bumper plate, 
as well as puts all of the weight of the entire bar and plates on just one edge of the plate. So we had to engineer for that. Still, no problem. And we'll do one more. See how high I can toss this thing. It may not be high, who knows. no problem. Do we have any more comments, Susie? Otherwise, I think I'm going to wrap it up in just a minute. No more comments? Okay, so Susie also informed me that today is National Hot Dog Day. So, in honor of National Hot Dog Day, the very next person who comments on this video about my hair will get a free pair of French Sport Ranger panties so they can show off their hot dog to all of their gym mates and whatnot. So leave a comment on there. It must be about my hair. You must be in the US. And I'll send you a free pair of <clears throat> Ranger panties so you can show off your hot dog just like I do every day. It just says nice hair. <coughs> there you go. <clears throat> Seems like I'm losing my voice. So remember, <coughs> bumper plates on sale up to 20% off. I'm dying here. <coughs> <coughs> bumper plates on sale to 20% off this week only sale ends Monday our bumper plates are awesome feel free to drop 10 pound plates doesn't matter national hot dog day share your hot dog with pride